meine Zuschauer, meine Freunde, meine Familie. Wir von Game1.de machen euch ein Angebot, das ihr nicht ablehnt. Ah, nee, ohne Scheiß, ey. Schlechte Pate, Parodien sind voll aus. Ey, komm, wir zocken einfach Mafia 2. Tja, kaum ein Gangsterverein regt die Fantasie von Schundschreibern so sehr an wie die berühmte Cosa Nostra. Kein Wunder, dass Mafia 1 schon sehr beliebt im Gamerlager war. Jetzt erscheint Teil 2 und wir haben die ersten Missionen schon mal angespielt. Und Producer Alex Cox mal ein bisschen auf den Zahn gefühlt. Alles über Mafia 2, warum es nur noch ein Ende im Spiel gibt und die Kooperation mit dem Playboy im Interview. Wer das nicht guckt, landet bei den Fischen. Well, I think that Mafia itself is like a very different type of game from other open world games. I think that like on, on face value, obviously you drive around the city, you can get into gunfights with cops, these kind of features which you'd see in other games. But the, the thing about Mafia is it's all about, um, you know, mob life, you know, playing the life, you know, living the life of a Mafia gangster. The focus of the game is very much on the story. So like it's a cinematic linear action game and with an open world backdrop. You know, the game is set in the 1940s and the 1950s. The period atmosphere is very important to the story. So, like, the city's there really to support that, to support the believability of the game world. So, like, the, the story happens in a realistic context, if you like, rather than it being a source of the gameplay. So I think that's where it differs from a lot of other games in this kind of open-world genre. I think that the thing that we've really tried to do with Mafia 2 is to is to sort of like evolve what the original Mafia game did, um, you know, the, uh, quite a few years ago. It was basically take those, the, the attention to, uh, the, the attention to detail, the period kind of vibe, the cinematic storytelling, and evolve that rather than um, looking at other games really. Like it's, that's really been our main focus. Now, of course, like um, games like GTA and, and things like this have done great things with driving and, and shooting and other things. So like, of course, we've learned lessons from other games, but nevertheless, like, Our focus has really been on evolving Mafia rather than worrying too much about other games. Yeah, sure. So, like, things that, you know, like, gamers didn't like so much in the, in the first game, I think, or was, like, uh, the first thing was, like, maybe the police system was, was good. It's there. It's, it's supposed to be a firm presence. It's supposed to make the player behave realistically in the city. But you could... People would tell us stories of like, you know, they'd skip a red light and they'd end up getting chased to death by the police. So like, we, we sort of toned that back a little bit. We focused still on, we focused on the, on the gameplay there, made it, made it more fun to like sort of d escape from the cops, hide away from them, use the cover system that we've got in the game to hide around corners from a cop that's running down the street, for example. So like, it's, it's more forgiving on the player. The driving, again, like, we, want the we wanted the cars to feel believable like they did in the original Mafia game. You know, cars in the first game were supposed to be 1930s vehicles they were quite realistically modeled uh, but in some cases they were quite slow you know as they were in real life now like because we wanted to keep things realistic uh, we wanted to keep that believable kind of car model behavior but you know because the, the the timelines moved on to the 1940s and particularly the 1950s where most of the game happens cars are naturally faster than the, the engines are more powerful so we achieved both goals at the same time we we managed to keep quite realistic with the car handling, but make the cars faster, more exciting to drive. We also have like two different settings for cars. So like there is a kind of a, a default, we, we, which we call like normal behavior, which is maybe a little bit toned down from simulation settings. So most gamers can have an exciting car chase. You know, we want the car chases and, and the driving to look like something out of a mob movie. So when you screech around the corner, you know, like smoke is coming from your tires and, and maybe there's a guy shooting a Tommy gun out of the window. These kind of things that people imagine from a, from a mafia movie happen, but it's not like really complex. For fans of the original game that liked the deep simulation driving, we have a different setting. So like those guys can play with the, with the more realistic physics maybe and, and behaviors of, of, the, uh, of the car models. I think it's like, it's, it, you're right to say, it's like treading a, treading, a, treading a line here between like what gamers expect from a Mafia movie and what we would bring to the table, you know, as our original sort of take on it. Now, we wanted to like play along, play with the whole thing, like make references to famous movies like Goodfellas, Godfather and stuff like that. Players will definitely recognize circumstances, scenarios, themes from those movies. But we've brought our own kind of style of storytelling to it, particularly in terms of like creating an original scenario, settings, characters, particular details of the challenges the characters face. But 
really we wanted players to feel like they were playing in the movies that they love. You know, like we wanted to do that. So like it's a it's a it's a question of where we make references and where we sort of like innovate. It's a it's a kind of a mix of the both. I was, um, as part of my role was like to oversee the localization of the game for European languages actually. Um, f again, I think we're building on the legacy of the first Mafia game which had like, uh, by repute, I, you know, I had not played it in German, I'm an English speaker, but like, um, by repute, excellent localization quality when that game was released. We wanted to see that through again with the second game. A lot of attention's gone into uh, making sure that the game is completely playable, completely on par quality-wise, with the English voiceover um, in all European territories, or for main European languages. I'm sorry if you speak a very minority language, but um, French, Italian, uh, French, Italian, German, Spanish, all of those have got their own localization. Also Russian and Czech, the studios in the Czech Republic, so these guys have their own localized version. Um, it was important to us. It was important to us. I mean, like, the, yeah, the game is set in, in um, New York, you know, a New York-style environment, rather, called Empire Bay. So, like, the first thing for us in English was to make sure that the Italian-American vibe in English was there. You know, a lot of gamers are going to want to also maybe play in English rather than the localised version because it's that thing. So, to play, we wanted to make sure that, first off, if you want to see Italian-American English speakers, that's going to work. If you prefer to play in your local language, then you're going to have an equal quality experience. I think, um, I mean, I can't speak for Playboy as such, but, like, we've had a good relationship with them. Uh, they were convinced by the, you know, we're not, we're not creating a sensationalist game. We're not creating something that's really gratuitous or horrible. We, you know, we're telling a mature mafia movie style story. The setting is, um, is believable, it's plausible, it's quite stylishly and sophisticatedly delivered. So it's like, it's, um, in that case, I'm sure this, the, you know, the, the, the Playboy are obviously cool with the, with the context of the game. The tie-in, I think, is, is works quite well for both parties, you know, like, Mafia and Playboy is, as brands, there's quite a lot of synergy there. We imagine our main characters like Vito and Joe reading Playboy magazine back in the day. You know, like Playboy's a, a brand which originates in this era. They've provided us with like 50 period covers from the time and, and, and the centerfold girls, obviously we've got you know, beautiful women from the 1950s particularly, uh, that the players can collect. We think it's a good incentive for, uh, for gamers to go around and collect items in the environment. And yeah, we're pretty pleased. The whole partnership with Playboy's gone pretty well. Well, when we, were, we, we did have four different kind of endings for the game planned. But when we started looking at it in terms of how we wanted the, the game to end, there was one ending which kind of summed up the story that was like the proper ending. And the other endings like, didn't really, weren't really satisfying to us, weren't really the way that we wanted the story to end for Vito, the main character. And it was interesting to give players the choice. But like in the end, it was more for us about making one definitive you know like story which has got a dramatic ending with the kind of um, you know final feeling that players expect to get at the end of the game and having multiple endings and choices at the end didn't really make sense you know like the game is a, is a linear experience like player choice isn't really a big part of it so having these kind of like divergent endings really didn't fit into the overall design when we produced them and were allowing people to play it this was the feedback that we got Um, in terms of downloadable content, we do have a plan for downloadable content. We're not talking about details right now, but like we do have a plan for downloadable content. Well, we've just, we're finishing up the game at the moment. So you know, once we start finishing up the game, we start thinking about what extra gameplay experiences we can start to bring to gamers, what more we've got to create in the world, what more opportunities, maybe character development that we can, we can look into and create a bit more content. So we're looking at that right now. Um, in terms of the extra endings, well, I don't know. Maybe we'll release details of what they were one day once the game's out there and everybody's had a chance to play it. And um, yeah, sure, I'm sure that's interesting information for some people there. I wouldn't want to spoil what the ending is right now without with talking about it. But I don't think we'd have a problem with sharing this information somewhere along the line. I think so. I think so. Like, it's, um, we certainly want to evoke in the game a, a feeling of nostalgia for the period. You know, like the period setting is something that's quite distinctive about Mafia as well. You know, like there's a feeling of nostalgia for the period, the music and the style, the design, the morality of the people, you know, the characters and what they believe, what their goals in life were, was very different than maybe what people might believe today. Um, but, you know, in addition to this, there's like restrictions for the gameplay that we find are quite interesting. So we want the cars to be believable, for example, so they, the cars